Welcome to Level with Emily Reese. This is a conversation with composer Gary Scheiman about his music for the game Forspoken, which is the new action RPG from Luminous and Square Enix. The game just came out. It just came out last week on January 24th, 2023. It's mostly an orchestral score, and it was recorded in Nashville with a live orchestra. And I mean, it's Gary Scheiman. The headline of the email, the subject line could say, Gary Scheiman scores trash. And I would be like, yes, I will interview Gary Scheiman. <laughs> trash is coming out next year. Yeah. So the music is fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's lush. It There's a lot of motion to it. There's a lot of emotion to it. Uh, it's rhythmic and beautiful. It's really just fantastic. I interviewed Gary before the game came out, and I was given a selection of tracks. I got to hear six tracks in advance of the game dropping. Um, So those are the six tracks that you'll hear in the audio podcast. We don't put the music in these YouTube videos, and it uh, might be time to remind you why, and that is just one word, copyright. So I will say no more about that. Gary, for years, has taught at USC at the University of Southern California. He teaches in the film and uh, game scoring program. So we talk about that a little bit. And we also have some share some fun memories about his uh, fantastic music for the Bioshock series. Join us on Discord. You'll find that link down in the show notes. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you can support us on Patreon, that'd be great. And also down in the show notes, you'll find all of those links, including a link to our merch page. If you want some Level with Emily merch, you can find that link down below. All right, here is Gary Scheiman talking about Forspoken. The game uh, is uh, fantasy, uh, real, I don't know if it's called an RPG. It is. Role playing. Yeah, I guess you would call it an RPG. Um, and you play a character named Frey. Frey is a young woman living in New York and whose life is pretty kind of devolving and not doing well at all. She's struggling and, uh, mysteriously and amazingly, she gets transported to the world of Athia, which is, uh, a fantasy world and but but a dangerous fantasy world and it's about her navigating that world and be, being sort of like the reluctant um you know hero yeah. uh, and uh fighting her way through a very insane crazy world it, it, you know what i one of the things that i think is really cool about the game is that it it, it has a very emotional aspect to it and i and i think at the end of the game you'll feel very connected to the characters and particularly to Frey, of course and to her journey not only the the journey of you know getting through this world and all the battles and fighting that she has to do but uh, per, she has a struggle in and how she deals with it and overcomes all that emotionally so i i, I think that well, for one thing, it gave me an opportunity to write some beautiful music, <laughs> which is always cool from a game composer who's written a lot of dark, scary music. It's kind of yeah. really nice to write a melody that's really beautiful. So in any event, so that's sort of the overview. I don't want to give any spoilers, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. because you'll have to play the game. Uh, but I think one of the things that is going to entice gamers is the gameplay dynamic and the, all the battling and the magic and all that stuff which is amazing mm-hmm. so i think people will really enjoy that aspect of the game as well but again there's also this they they hired some really good writers uh hollywood yeah. writers they got hollywood writers uh and uh and who wrote a really wonderful script so there's lots of cool stuff and in fact there's a lot of cinematics cutscenes that i scored nearly an hour of cutscenes so there's all that too so there and all those of course are acted out by the by the Mm -hmm. various actors um yeah and do a great job and so there's so there's a there's a there's a story and a game here that i think uh people will really enjoy 
Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely right up my alley, a big open world, like RPG fantasy kind of there's sci fi esque aspects to it, too, in a way, you know, and um, I just I love that. Uh, And and given that, you know, the score I got to hear, I think I was sent six tracks. I'm not entirely sure. I I have them all written out because I have questions about each of them, but um, six or seven tracks. And uh uh, what I heard, I absolutely loved, and and like you said, there are a lot of soaring melodies, but largely orchestral, right? So, talk to me about you know the choices to keep the music. Um, I guess I don't think traditional is a fair word to use, but orchestral, you know. Yeah, that was definitely from the start. They wanted, and this is Luminous Games, who made the who are the developers, and they're part of the Square Enix world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they wanted an orchestral sco- score that was decided at the top, uh, at okay. the beginning. And, uh, you know, I, I worked, I scored this game with my good friend, Bear McCreary, mm. uh, who, who was involved most more at the, at the early stages because he wrote some real lovely themes mm. for the, for the game. And, uh, but it was clear that they wanted an orchestral approach to it. That said, we used synth elements and s- unusual instruments and uh, um, viola de amor, uh, which became sort of oh. like an instrument that I used a lot. And also, uh, there's a, because Car- uh, Frey <clears throat> is the main character, we found a wonderful singer. She, uh, the, the woman who plays Frey and also the character in the game is black. And so mm-hmm. we found this amazing singer, uh, India Carney, who's also black, but her, her, she's just did these beautiful solos. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I, she got incorporated. She's sort of the voice of Frey. Okay. And yeah. I, I, that's how I thought of her, you know, in in game. And she 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 lives here in Los Angeles. Oh, uh, cool. We also the the choir was recorded in Los Angeles with L.A. singers. The oh, wow. orchestra was recorded in Nashville, and I okay. went. I spent a week in Nashville to record the orchestra, and we actually did record some remotely in Vienna as well. Oh, so wow. we recorded, yeah, Vienna has a wonderful reputation. The, the I was going to record the entire orchestral score in Los Angeles. We had the resources to do that, but be- at that time, because of the COVID restrictions, yep. it was going to add like a, a lot. I mean, like $50,000 <laughs> in additional recording costs to record in Los Angeles, <laughs> which made no sense. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. it, it just would have meant we had less, like a much smaller orchestra or yeah. less time with the orchestra or some mm-hmm. cues would have to go without any orchestral treatment, just samples and scents out of the box. Mm-hmm. So so it made more sense to go to Nashville. We had a great time in Nashville. Yeah. I was I really had a fantastic week and and they and the Nashville chicken's really good too, the spicy chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you like spicy chicken? No, and Nashville yeah, yeah. was great. Um the awesome. studio there is uh, is it's not like like box or something like that, which is where yeah. I would have recorded it here. It's a smaller stage and okay. it doesn't have quite the acoustic uh beauty of a box but it's it sounded really good the only okay. it, it is a, a converted church it's an old church and okay. the downside is that if a big truck rumbles by we have to stop the take <laughs> 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 so it's not soundproof like a a, a, a really true studio or scoring stage as they're called the big ones mm-hmm. uh are like thick concrete walls and they have yeah. airspace in between and the floors are literally up off the ground and there's like some rubber or something in between the floor the concrete and the ground so that any rumbling gets absorbed mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that it's 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 quite a, a complex thing to make a, like a truly professional scoring stage yeah. uh, fox of course is in the middle of a studio so there are cars from but you don't hear any cars whatever so yeah. that's it that's it it was a very minor issue because we did yeah. not hear cars but we <laughs> but if it was a big truck rumbling yeah. by we would have to go uh, you know and, and it was funny because i'd be i conducted <laughs> and oh, i'd be cool. conducting and i didn't even hear the truck and they go we got to do another take because we yeah. heard the truck and we go okay yeah, Start. well, it's oh, those yeah. low frequencies, right? The low bass that yeah. we maybe wouldn't hear anyway, but it definitely is picked up by the mics and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
So that was that. Was, so yeah, we did. We did have a, a beautiful and and the players in Nashville are wonderful. They've yep. they've gotten so good. I mean that the secret to you could you could have you could go. There's so many great orchestras in the world, but it is different recording with an orchestra that has never recorded. You know, like. The, the the trick is to do it a lot and to like become really good readers because they have to yeah. read this music. They're looking at it for the first time and it's kind of like mm-hmm. amazing how good they are. But that does not, it's one thing if you're playing Beethoven symphony for the 90,000th time or whatever, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Brahms or whatever, that you're familiar with that music. And yeah, there's contemporary music that they have to learn, but to, to sight read this music yeah. and perform it well, very what within two or three takes, or four takes maybe, mm-hmm. that takes doing it a lot. And because Nashville has been very successful over the last like fifteen years, where they've been yeah. really doing it, uh, they they're, they're really they have a really good orchestra there now. Awesome, yeah, it's really stepped up in that part of the country for sure. Yeah, um. I mean the the they and they sound fantastic. The the music is absolutely gorgeous and lush and 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 all of that. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the track, the first track that I heard, which was Janoon. That's what I'm going to say, Janoon, uh, Janoon World One. And uh, you know, there are certain instruments that I heard kind of throughout the handful of tracks that I heard. I heard some harp. And oboe featured a couple of times, and I'm curious if those were just choices that you made in the moment, or if you were like, "I I want harp to be a through line in this score." Harp became an important element. You know, it's okay. it, it, there's a little story. I don't know how interesting the story is, but <laughs> I, so initially, I uh, before before we went to Nashville, I wanted to, I'd never recorded there. But I'd heard good okay. things about it. But yeah. because my music can sometimes be not so easy to play because I I make keep them busy, as they say, uh, <laughs> I did a remote session, and I had harp, sampled harp, but we hired a harp player, mm-hmm. and I was not entirely pleased with the harp. Okay. So I said, let's not record harp. You know, my 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 harp sample sounds fine. Let's just not record. So we didn't record harp in. Okay. Nashville. We got back and I said, you know, there's so much harp in this. I, I, and so I brought in a wonderful harpist, Gail Levant, who I've used for years. And we replaced all of my sampled harp oh, with wow. Gail. So the harp and, and she just and we did it. We did it as an overdub because, of course, the harp was isolated as a stem, as they call it. As, a, as sure. So we, we did we, we weren't stuck with it and we just replaced it. Nice. And so the harp did become an because I was using the harp a lot, which mm. I love the instrument. It's like such oh, an yeah. amazing instrument. Yeah, you know it's that uh, we we definitely it definitely became one of the sounds of of uh, the first spoken music. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, it, yeah, but talk to me about the the track Janoon, if you would. Then I'll and then I'll save my comments for it. I want to hear your take. All right, so this is one of the tracks where she's, there's these different parts of the world of Athia, and one is Janoon. And so this is one of those tracks where, she, where the, the your your character, Frey, is traveling through this area for the first time. Okay. And and it's beautiful. It's it's ruggedly beautiful. And uh, so it's just, it's just, it's just to make, make this journey, so to reinforce the beauty uh, and the, you know, character of this part mm-hmm. of the world, yeah. And harp, of course, is uh, is definitely a big part of it. And I just, I just thought this was a a, a pretty, very lovely cue. I thought, anyways. Yeah. And uh, um, I, I remember writing this cue. I, I, this was actually the second one that I, I wrote something, and they they weren't happy with it. This happens all the time okay. with, with us composers, for but, sure. And, yeah. and, 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 um, and then, and then I wrote this and I go, Oh, this is really nice. I'm, I was really <laughs> glad they made me re- rewrite it. Cause well, they gave me some input. They, they, yeah. What I had done was not quite fitting 
um okay the, the, that world and then and they loved this they were yeah. like yeah that's that's beautiful so um yeah the texture is great how you've got the you know i don't know if it's in three or six i don't know how you thought of it if, if you were thinking in eighth notes or 16th notes as these subdivisions but like but like the you know there's this constant marcato rhythm underneath of these eighth or sixteenths and then these legato flowing melodies over top and i i loved that mixture in in the texture quite a bit yeah they're eighths and it's in three four okay and cues and okay. three and yeah. uh yeah it just okay. you know it's like what you never know it's it's it is it's weird how you find the meter and all this sort of thing it's just sort of like it's intuitive it's entirely intuitive i don't think i, I never say i'm going to write a cue in three four you know right no right it's just like i oh, this oh this music's in three <laughs> clearly in three you know yeah yeah so <clears throat> it just um it was those chord changes at the beginning that i that i first occurred to me as i wrote da, 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 da. The, that's mm -hmm. really what sort of inspired me that, that i mean that's the compositional process for me anyways and i think for maybe most composers it's like something some idea occurs to you and mm -hmm. then I don't think the melodies occurred to me first. I think <clears throat> it was that chord progress, chord oh, progression, okay. and okay. then the melodies were. I worked worked over that, you know. Yeah. So some really great horn lines too. Uh, that the the horn just like jumps up a major seventh, and uh, then then they do it as a section later on. I just loved that. Loved it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we had a great horn section. Nashville yeah. has a wonderful, we had six horns. And, nice. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't remember the name of the first horn player, but she was really good. She was complaining a lot. Really? <laughs> this is really hard. But I'm <laughs> going, but you're getting it. You're nailing it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is high. That probably is kind of high yeah. for a horn, maybe. But, but she yeah. she was great. She, I mean, they're, they're like, yeah. they have a great, and that's that is something that often, you struggle with as a composer is like finding the brass, the brass, you know, the strings, you tend to have a good supply of strings in many, many locations in the world, but it's the brass yeah. that you go, oh man, there's the brass is not cutting it, but the brass <laughs> in this, in this instance, they were yeah. wonderful. And, and yeah. we had six of them and six is a good number of, yeah. of uh, horns to have. Yep. Yep. Uh, the next track that uh, I got to hear, I'm not sure how to say it. It's C I P A L, Sipal. Sipal. Sipal, the last yeah. bastion. Now, yeah. this, I, I, those first three chords, first four chords didn't hit me until I heard them the second time in the middle. And then I thought of Thomas Tallis, of course, because these are like the chords, right? So, so talk to me about the beautiful, like, Full. You're using strings from bottom to top in those opening chords, and it's so lush. Yeah, uh, I think the idea of having a Vaughn Williams esque vibe to it, you know, yeah. was uh, because the, it was well, Sepal is the capital of the world of Athia. Okay, and it's the place that is clearly like um, that's where you land in uh, in Athia. Uh, in in the city okay. of Sao Paulo, and they're under siege from these forces, sort of coming in. There's there's this sort of uh, um, horror kind of you know, imposing itself. So, okay. but so it needed a theme. But it, it is an ancient city, and and it's sort of a, a beautiful place, you know. Uh, and so that that's really that was what they wanted. They wanted a yeah. theme for for. Uh, Sapal, this this city, and and it, they wanted a noble quality to it as well. Yeah, I love the mode too in this one, like Mixolydian with a flat six. I, I, you know, it's basically just a major scale, right? But a flat six and seven, and right, it's like right. kind of that fantasy kind of vibe. But um, but again, really pretty, right? It's not minor and you know, overly aggressively epic or anything. It's just very lovely. Yeah, it has some minor, major triads in it. And, yeah, I um, imagine that. Which is yeah. which is really nice. And uh, and of course, the orchestra nailed it. And Yeah, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. 
Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, you mentioned India Carney and, you know, she does sound absolutely great on, on these tracks. Vagabond, uh, I'm thinking of Vagabond. Vagabond with, again, there's really great energy in here with like kind of an ostinato rhythm in the background, <laughs> but these flowing, beautiful things. Um, how much direction did you give her or like how does that kind of relationship work when the singer is doing this kind of improvisatory addition to the texture as you know in a way yeah i mean the 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 great thing about doing it as an overdub is i don't have the orchestra sitting there while we right. experiment you know so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and so i've i've learned over the years that if you have a part that like this and you want the singer or the player or whatever to to experiment mm -hmm. then the cost effective way to do it is to bring them in separately and just take your time because it's 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 an orchestra is really expensive it's like you know maybe 60 people sitting there burning yeah. the, the bucks are burning uh <laughs> versus one person you know uh, yep. so you have the studio cost and it's it's minor relative plus we didn't need to have her come into like a, a giant studio we went to the actually we went my engineer dan blessinger's new studio he just built a studio in torrance oh, cool. and it's really cool it's really nice. it's a lovely it's a really great studio awesome. but um so i wrote parts for her she was reading melodies but then i would say to her because she also had the chord changes in the chart that she had you know the the, the her her part yeah and i said you want to improvise go for it so i let her improvise so it's a combination of her improvising cool. and her singing the parts that i wrote for her okay okay interesting yeah i've i've often wondered how how that all shakes out um and then she's also in unwavering resolve which sounded a bit more like a combat track to me now i know you said um you wrote for a lot of uh Cutscenes and and the like. Right. Uh, you know how much kind of combatty music did you really get get your fingers into? There is a lot of combat music. Okay, yeah. There's probably an hour of combat in this oh, game. Oh wow! Okay, okay. That's I was pretty. I was yeah. burned out on combat music. Yeah. <laughs> <after> this. <laughs> This, like, you know, I feel like that's a common thing for composers that I hear is that they kind of get a little burned out on doing the combat music sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, because there can just be so much of it, and you feel like you don't want to repeat yourself. Yeah. Um, but but you're just, especially once you've developed a particular style, and you're sort of staying in that style. So yeah, yeah so an hour of it, because think about it, that's like 30, because most of these combat cues were in-game. As a matter of fact, I think all of the combat, there's there's some combat in the cinematics. I'm not even counting that, you know. Sure. But, um <laughs> But at least I had picture to play. That helps when you have picture to play because, okay, here's what I'm scoring, you know. But mm -hmm. so the in-game combat was, okay, you know what's going on. You know if she is fighting, there's these uh, tantas or witches that you're mm -hmm. fighting. And so you know which one. They all have sort of themes that represent them. Okay. But, um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, two-minute. Most of them are two-minute combat cues two minute looping combat sure, cues. sure sure so yeah. you're just writing a ton of those i probably wrote 30 of them if i'm wow I'm, I'm i'm i'd have to count them i may be it might i'd be off by a few yeah, up yeah. or down up or down but it, but <laughs> that that would be pretty much that. that's a lot of combat yeah music to write you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. but but it was fun i mean the combat was fun to write as well i'm not i'm not complaining for sure but, yeah. but it just i was burned out on it i was like okay that's, <laughs> that's enough i remember they were thinking well, do we need another combat cue for this and i go no oh, i don't think you actually do i don't think you have enough <laughs> combat music <laughs> <laughs> like, okay they, they didn't fight me with me on that because i go because you have like four combat music cues for this one sequence you know because it would be different things oh, would yeah. occur mm -hmm. like like you fight these uh tantas and th there's these different I, I i don't know how much i don't want to give spoilers away the so game will I, be I, out by the time i mean well if that okay. helps it'll, it'll be out because it's all right so okay weeks. well it'll still be a few weeks so you're fighting and there's different aspects of it so they may have minions that you're fighting their their underlings okay. that are fighting for her and then you're fighting them and then all of a sudden that tantas is super enraged and you want to 
do something, they want a different cue for that intensity, that driving intensity of uh, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. of that. So, so that's <laughs> you know, so you end up writing the one after another after another, and so it can be it can be a challenge. But I mean, I yeah. I, I did it, and uh, and I feel like you know, I, I tell my students I teach at USC and the screen scoring program there, which is for twenty cohort students who want to become film, TV, and game composers. Mm-hmm. You know, and I tell them I, when I first, when I was a young composer years ago, I used to write action music for a film and TV. Because you know, it was a long time ago, there was no games essentially in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> yeah. uh, there were some games, but not not like today. Yeah, and uh, I was always like challenged and like, oh man, I got to write an action cue, whatever. And it's like it was something I always hated because I not because it's. But it's because it's really hard, and I and I didn't feel it was like my forte. And I said yeah. I was cured by game music because <laughs> I because once you start writing for a game, it's like you you either sink or swim. It's like you're <laughs> like somebody's dad throwing them in the pool. You know, you can swim here. There you go. So you're thrown in the pool, you know, without any uh, any yeah. uh, life raft or whatever amazing and and you have to sink or swim so i swam i decided i wanted to do more yeah. more game scores so mm-hmm. i had to write uh, and i've gotten really good at it i think yeah. i've written a lot of combat music now and, and i think i some of i think some really you know some of my best music has been action mm-hmm. because and i've and they're they are fun to write and they're fun to record yeah. and mix you know because they're really yeah. you know but yep too much of a good thing, you know. Yeah. It's like you know, cake today, and then yeah. what's on the what's on the menu? More cake. More cake. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was probably, uh, uh, and I remember talking to you about it uh, years and years ago. Now was that was one of my favorite things about Bioshock Infinite was your combat music. It was some of my favorite, still to this day, some of my favorite combat music ever in a game. Well, you because... are a glutton for punishment then, because it's so <laughs> it's so intense and I know on chalkboard. I you know, know. It's, it is funny because I always thought, you know, like when I was writing it, I go, okay, I think the idea is like to make this combat music so intense and so on, <laughs> and that people will want to defeat the enemy just to stop the music from playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an incentive. It's you know? true. But, it's but true. you know, it's like, like when I play some of those cues for my classes, they love those cues. Yeah, really it's amazing. So yeah. It, it is. It's cool music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, I have to thank... Um, Ken Levine, who pushed me to write in this style with small string ensembles. Yeah. We talked about this. You know, we talked about it. It's small. Mm-hmm. It's not like a giant 90-piece orchestra playing this music. It's these right. small, intense, really, uh, you know, close mic'd strings yeah. squealing away and some mm-hmm. percussion, but but that, that was very effective, yeah. Anvil or something, whatever that clanging. Yeah, was some an- anvil is a Anvil, good, more an- anvil, good. yeah. <laughs> Amp up the apple. Yeah, it's so good. Um, there's a really beautiful cue at the end too that uh, uh, we got to hear because just reminding that the game, as of this interview, is not out yet, but of course will be by the time this gets published. Um, the rite of remembrance and honoring the departed. So it's there's no secret that this is some kind of tribute to people who have fallen in battle or something, some such, right? It's funerary kind right. of music. So right. Um, right. really, but again, gave you an opportunity, right, to write something really beautiful. So talk to me about that. Thank you. Yeah, that's that is as, as long as people are uh, the games already come out and the scores are. So you'll see these titles. Yeah, that that's exactly what's occurring there. And mm-hmm. I, and as part of as I mentioned earlier in our conversation that the emotional aspect of this yeah. game. And I think mm-hmm. that is sort of like the moment where you really, you know, maybe draw a tear or two because it, <laughs> it, you you care about these characters and you've yeah. seen it. And, and also there is a revelation that uh, occurs in the game okay. that the character realizes something very significant. And so that's sort of also honored okay. in this aspect of, okay. of the score, you know, and, and, or, and of course the visuals as well. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is essentially a cinematic. It's, you're basically, to, it's a long, okay. like a, I think it's a three minute cinematic. I'm not sure. I forget how long okay. that queue is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. When it comes to the cinematics, um, you know, I'm always curious cause I'm sure it, I, I would imagine it's different from project to project, but when you're getting a cinematic, you know, exactly how much direction 
are you given in terms of what posts to hit throughout the uh, scene? Or uh, are you just kind of given free reign to musically point out things that you feel you want to point out? You know what I mean? Yeah, it sometimes you are asked to catch certain things, but they didn't they did not request that. Mm-hmm. It's, it is it's a, actually a funny funny may not be the right word it's an interesting aspect of scoring because you find that with different directors or you know of course i'm talking about scoring to picture now so with different directors you they want a lot of stuff caught i remember ken levine loved when i caught things and of course i didn't have a lot of cinematics in bioshock but in bioshock infinite there was some but he loved catching things you know Mm -hmm. but others don't they want you to sort of play through and maybe just subtly catch things so you have to sense that you know and you you just have to use your intuition as well it's like Mm -hmm. what's important you know the the term mickey mousing is a term that composers uh, film composers use when because that's a cartoon that in cartoons and animation you're more likely to catch lots of little things so you know um sure think of the warner brother cartoons of years ago where literally every movement of the characters is uh <clears throat> is nailed by the composer so yeah. that is not something you want to do most of the time okay you yeah. want to find those important moments to to enhance and sometimes it's they're subtly enhanced you know you 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 are underscoring and catching something but it's in a subtle way and other times it's quite like yeah you want to nail it you know Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so it i i i'm i it's intuitive it's just like yeah Yeah. i think that that some sometimes it's so clear you know the character sees something Mm -hmm. and has an emotional reaction and you want to underscore that that's where where music does its does its job uh, and, but other and there are certainly folks, directors, what you work with, who go, "You're playing too much." You know that they they yeah, will okay. be concerned about that. <clears throat> but I feel like when it's done right, and when mm-hmm. it's done subtly, you know, when it should be subtle. I mean, sometimes, like you know, all of a sudden, you know, you open the curtain and there's a guy with a knife and stabbing. <laughs> you know, like Bernard Herman <laughs> had to catch that. You know, you yeah. can't like. Just play through that, you know. <laughs> so there's times yeah. when it's so obvious that you got to just completely, you know, <laughs> you know, we Amazing. have to do that. We have Amazing. to do that sometimes. But other times when it's done just right, it's just subtle. And it's and mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it, 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 some people have said, and I think it's true, that good film music is not heard. It's oh. sort of like you're just so sucked in. You, you're just, you, yeah. you're just completely in flow with what's going on and yeah you're aware of that there's really beautiful music or really intense music but it's not you're not listening to the notes so much as you are feeling it you know yeah yeah. and i think that's generally true you know in in scoring anything you know that if if you're if you're noticing it too much it's off it can often be distracting it means there's like maybe the music is uh is not working i've I've seen films you i'm sure we've all seen films where like the music is just like annoying us you know oh for sure yeah yeah yeah, just don't score it you know take it out or whatever (laughs) yeah yeah so (laughs) don't want to do that and Mm -hmm. then and then hopefully the music can be enjoyed separately you buy the soundtrack you know yeah and uh or just listen to it on youtube because it's usually it all ends up there wherever you know right <laughs> everything ends up on youtube right? i know it's like <laughs> it's like the uh ultimate yeah you know. <laughs> yeah gary i know you know in the past you've had opportunities to write uh, music for music's sake you know write music for stage or or whatnot have you had a chance to do any of that lately or are you really just busy with game composing and teaching i'm trying to think i i haven't lately uh mm. i think part of that is like the market for it is you know it's like the market for poetry it's, <laughs> it's not it's not exactly uh you know and i think most even most of us who write and for the concert stage, it's like really hard to get a performance, especially if you're Definitely. writing for a big orchestra. If you're running for a string quartet, it's much easier. But if yeah. you're running for an orchestra, I mean, my I had my viola concerto performed a few years ago, and that was wonderful. But it's mm-hmm. like it's just like you write this music, and you 
put your heart into it and then there's no market for it. you're never going to make any money likely yeah to, yeah uh, for that effort and yeah. then but <clears throat> that said that's not so important if you are going to get a performance and you're going to have it's going to get heard mm -hmm. so um i'm i'm not right now i'm 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 okay. i have i find a great satisfaction from the music i write that yeah. that for you know Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. games mostly for games yeah. and uh, maybe maybe a film this year we'll see oh nice um, okay yeah. interesting yeah and how are the students this year how's the class like how how are you finding it this this time they're great yeah they're, we know we, we get several hundred people applying yeah so we take less than 10 percent of them and so if Amazing. we've chosen correctly you know they they apply actually we're in the process right now and i help out so there's about five of us in the faculty who listen to they they pr provide <clears throat> examples of their music and mm -hmm. they interview themselves about talking about why they want to be in the program why they're interested in scoring oh, cool. films games etc mm -hmm. so you do your best to choose so i think we have a, a great group right now oh, cool. it's, it's it's really it is a pleasure you know um they're they're so in they're so into it and and yeah. uh I, I feel like, you know, I play a small role in their future, you know, it feels really good. I'm, and I also feel like I make friends, you know, I, I see a lot of them. I'm in, I'm in the SCL Society of Composers and Lyricists, and they come to the various events and we hug and see each other years later. And it's like really cool awesome. to have these, you know, mm -hmm. friends and students, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's great. Good. I'll see him tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> How many a day, days a week are you uh, uh, on campus? One day. Just oh, one just day one. Week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you do any remote anything or you're just on campus one day a week and that's that's the extent? Just on campus one day mm -hmm. a week. We, um, we, of course, there was a year where we were on Zoom because of yeah. COVID. Yeah. So that was, um, and, and we, you know what, one of the, one of the good things that came out of that is that we can do zoom and we've sort of learned how to use it. It's quite yes. an interesting tool. Yep. And for instance, uh, I, um, have my, my good friend and co-writer on this project, Bear McCreary <clears throat> is, um, going to do a zoom meeting with my class in February. Oh, cool. So yeah. just literally just arrange that. So um, nice. excited! Ex they're, they're excited to to meet him. He's been doing mm -hmm. amazing things, you know. So it's, yeah. it's so it's great to have that option when when it's appropriate. I've had other um, composer friends, you know, like um, um, I don't know, very Tom Salta folks oh, yeah. that that who don't live in Los Angeles who mm -hmm. can join the class because of zoom so we all just yeah zoom do zoom that day um they prefer i mean the the school usc wants us to be in person they definitely are pushing that and the students mm -hmm. want to do in person as well yeah uh, but yeah. W when you have some opportunity that can only be done by zoom that's great that that is really mm -hmm. cool that 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 is now an option <clears throat> that works yeah. really well. The other cool thing is you can record it, and and yeah. people who might not have been able to attend can can um, can listen to it later, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's really changed how we do the podcast here. So, I mean, it's changed. I think how radio is done. It's changed all kinds of things. Yeah, um, yeah. It's really it's kind of opened up. And you know, I have like friends who don't live in LA. And, and now when we meet on Zoom, I feel like like hanging out with you, you're a friend, yep. like we can kind of just hang out. And, yeah. uh, and if, it, it's it's better than a phone conversation. There's nothing wrong with a phone. It but it's like, it feels like you've had time, a better contact, you know, with that person. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. I think I was very hesitant as such an audio fo focused person. I was so hesitant. I'm like, I can do fine interviews over audio. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But then just when everybody just got accustomed to being on Zoom and you just didn't even, you don't even think about it being weird anymore. You know, it's just like, oh, we're video chatting. It's completely normal. Um, and kind of relaxing into that uh, has been a really fun thing. And I, I enjoy it too. I, I feel like there is just a little bit more of a, a connection that can happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I agree. So whatever. Mm -hmm. my, and my, now my wife is a therapist and she's, she does all of her therapy on zoom and yeah. she prefers that she, now she, she's a therapist and you can only do therapy if you're uh, licensed in California to someone who is living in California. Yep. But she has clients in San Francisco and we live in LA, which you oh. could never have done in the past. Right, right. So she has clients all over the state now oh, interesting. Who, who do therapy remotely through mostly Zoom or yep. sometimes FaceTime, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so she prefers that. And yeah. they're, 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 they don't have to drive across town to yep. meet with the therapist. Yeah, that's how I do it now, too. When when people started going back into offices and stuff, my therapist was like, it's up to you. And I thought about it because I was like, you know, I think it's it's fine. It's working fine for me to do this over Zoom. I can see how for some people that wouldn't work. But, you know, I was like, this is this is great. Let's keep doing it this way. And um, I've I've been fine with that. I think it's great. Yeah, it's really it, so. There's so that there some good stuff came out of that horrible illness. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, Gary, what more do you want to say about Forspoken? Well, I, you know, if you're a gamer, uh, definitely play the game. Play the play the demo. The demo is uh, free to play. Yeah, uh, and I think that will entice you to to dive into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. it's really it's really cool. I think you'll enjoy the score. The score will be For available. Sure. The soundtrack will be available. Oh, good. Uh, if you want to, okay. if you want to purchase it, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I it, it was a delight to work on on this project. I'm grateful to uh, to everyone at uh, Luminous Games and Square Enix mm -hmm. for bringing me on board and yeah. giving me uh, the resources to record it with an orchestra it's always a privilege that's always yeah. you know because i i, I meet so many composers who go i never get to work with orchestra and i go oh man i'm so lucky i'm <laughs> so lucky to get that because it's expensive yeah. you know yeah it's really expensive and so you have mm -hmm. to have the game with the resources um, yep. they have the budget to justify it etc yeah yeah well, it was so nice to hear it. I cannot wait to hear the rest. And I was going to ask you, so it is officially going to get a release, the soundtrack. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's good <clears> news. <throat> yeah. Well, I always encourage people to buy it if possible or stream it as much as possible. And Gary, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Appreciate sure, it. Sure, Emily. Thanks so much for inviting me on. It's just good always to hang with my old friend and uh, talk about some music. 